What is mild scoliosis? Hi, Dr. Chris Schools, and I want to talk to you about the different severities of scoliosis and, and specifically talk to you about what would be identified as a mild scoliosis. So first, a brief overview of what scoliosis is. So scoliosis is defined by a lateral bending of the spine at a minimum of 10 degrees with rotation. Those are the two things that we need to actually diagnose someone with scoliosis, a lateral bending of at least 10 degrees and rotation of the spine. Now, when we talk about scoliosis, we can, we can grade it as a mild scoliosis, a moderate scoliosis, or a severe scoliosis. And we grade this by the severity of what's known as the Cobb angle of measurement. Now, to measure scoliosis, this is done on an x-ray, and we measure the angle of the curve. And that is done by looking at the top vertebrae that is the most tilted, and then also measuring the bottom vertebrae that's the most tilted. And we draw lines, and where these lines intersect, we measure that angle. And that's what's known as the Cobb angle of measurements. That's the gold standard of measuring x-rays or measuring scoliosis that's done on x-rays with the patient standing. So what is a mild scoliosis? A mild scoliosis is when the curve measures between 10 and 20 degrees. Now mild scoliosis has different treatment options. And that can be anything from observation, which is probably the most common um, treatment where someone is being period periodically checked or evaluated to see if the curve is progressing. And then sometimes we even do certain treatments, which I'll talk about in a middle. But first, what can actually lead to a scoliosis? Well, there are, seven, there are several potential causes. The most common cause of scoliosis is what's known as idiopathic. And idiopathic means no known cause. Over 80% of all scoliosis are classified as an idiopathic scoliosis without an exact known cause. Now, with, with that being said, there are many things that potentially cause idiopathic scoliosis. There is likely a genetic factor involved and also many other environmental factors or triggers that will set a scoliosis off. Other common causes are one, a congenital scoliosis. Now, a congenital scoliosis is when someone is born with a defect. And typically this is when the vertebrae grow um, abnormally. This could be where you have several vertebrae that are actually fused at birth at birth, it could be an extra vertebrae growing in the spine, or it could be a missed shape or wedge vertebrae. These are known as hemivertebrae, hemi but these are birth defects that someone um, is, is born with. Another type is what's known as a neuromuscular scoliosis. The two most common types of neuromuscular scoliosis are probably cerebral palsy, which is basically when there is a problem with the de um, brain development during pregnancy and that causes neuromuscular problems. And another one is actually muscular dystrophy, which is basically a weakening of the muscles. This is also a genetic disorder. Other um, causes of scoliosis can be what's called syndromic, or which basically the scoliosis is secondary of sudden syndrome. The most common syndromes that cause this are um, syndromes associated with soft tissue disease, such as Marfan syndromes or Ehlers Danlos syndrome. Those are all potential causes of, of scoliosis. Now, mild scoliosis, a lot of times is detected in, in adolescence, which is basically when someone hits teenage years. And when we see mild scoliosis, we could do anything from just observe that, which means we would do a re-exam, possibly an x-ray every six months to see if the curve progresses. Or in some cases, if we know that someone is at like the very beginning of puberty, like risks are zero, and they say they have a 20 degree scoliosis and that has a higher risk of progression, then things like scoliosis specific exercises and potentially part-time bracing could be an appropriate treatment. So what could be things that actually lead a mild scoliosis to progressing? The, the biggest cause is gonna be during growth spurts. And the most common growth spurt to look for this to progress is during the, the first year of puberty. This is what's known as the peak growth velocities. That first year of puberty, 
where teenagers or adolescents grow the fastest. This is where these mild curves have the greatest risk of progressing to a moderate or more severe curve. And this is when curves definitely need to be monitored. It's also when, if, there, if, if it is progressing or if there's a chance progressing, it's also when it's the most appropriate to do early intervention. Things like scoliospecific exercises or scoliosis bracing. And a lot of times in a mild curve, a nighttime brace, a brace only worn at night or a brace only worn part-time can be very effective. Other factors are if we see scoliosis in boys, these mild curves, that there's a higher risk of a pathology being associated. So that's a good time to actually do other tests like an MRI to potentially rule out any other pathologies that may potentially be contributing to that scoliosis. Along with that, um, males or boys with scoliosis have a higher risk of progression when we find it in an early onset or an idiopathic scoliosis. Now, you notice that I said we call it observation, not watch and wait, because observation is a form of treatment versus watching and waiting is doing nothing. So if someone chooses observation, they should be evaluated at least every six months by trained specialists in scoliosis where they should get an updated physical exam, look for physical signs of scoliosis, um, including rotation of the spine and asymmetry starting to show up. Also, taking regular x-rays, which is known as serial x-rays every six months, especially during that growth development, is really critical to monitor the scoliosis because if we see a mild scoliosis progressing, we know it's definitely time to get on conservative treatment. Now, when it comes to conservative treatment, we have a couple different options. One of those is scoliosis-specific exercise. Now, it's critical to know that scoliosis-specific exercise is much different than general exercise like general physical therapy. Things like chiropractic and general physical therapy have not been shown effective in impacting the potential progression of scoliosis or correcting those. But scoliosis-specific exercises, we're talking about Schroth, C's, or scoli balance, those have been shown effective at um, influence the, influencing the potential progression of scoliosis and in some caves reducing the size of those curves. Additionally, bracing. Now, traditional braces like a Boston brace, brace or a Charleston brace, they're, they use what's called as three-point pressure system. Or basically, that they, they worked it by trying to squeeze the spine and the goal of those is trying to hold the spine in the same position um, and hopefully keeping it from progressing to surgical levels. But more modern bracing, such as what's using a scoli brace, is actually a corrective brace. And scoli brace works by putting the spine in a 3D overcorrected position. So it's not just squeezing the spine, it's actually unrotating and it's putting the spine in the opposite position. And by putting the spine in an opposite position, it can actually influence how the curve um, changes over time and in many cases can actually reduce the size of the curve and sometimes it can completely eliminate the curve to the point where it would be low 10 degrees and then at that point not even technically um, diagnosed as scoliosis. The good news is when we get mild scoliosis curves, when you detect it early, they have a very high success rate. Sometimes they do not even need treatment, and those that do, if we get the right treatment early on, they have an extremely high success rate. So early detection, early treatment, the best success rates possible. So that's why we wanna do regular checkups. And even if you have a mild scoliosis, that's why you wanna do a regular checkup, because if it is a mild curve that can progress, if we do the right treatment early on, there's a much higher success rate. What we do see sometimes is someone was, um, diagnosed with a mild curvature and then nothing was really done and then three years later the parents start to notice something some asymmetries in the body or maybe the child or adolescent starts reporting pain and then it has progressed from a mild all the way to a moderate from a severe curve and a lot of times that's later on in skeletal maturity where it gets much harder to correct so mild curves good prognosis but you still want to make sure you see an expert and if treatment is recommended it'd be good to do the right treatment early on because that's going to lead to much higher success rates and better outcomes so i guess the final thought is if you have any sign of scoliosis even a, even a moderate scoliosis that is if you go to a general chiropractor or pediatrician or anyone that detects it seek out a trained specialist because that's the person that's going to know the most appropriate treatment and to make sure you're doing the right thing whether that's just observation or if treatment should be followed.